Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and today I'll be showing you uh, Research Tools video number 11, Python part 4, and I'll be talking about the if construct, while loops, and command line arguments. And we'll be dig farther into Python. Last time we talked about assignments, functions, and classes, so we'll be building on those. So open up a uh, Python shell inside of a terminal. So we'll do IPython, which is our advanced shell that's better than regular Python, and dash dash pylab. So now we're inside of an IPython shell and let's take a quick look at the if construct that lets you ask yes no questions and make decisions based on that. Um, let's take a quick try through the basic if syntax. We'll say if and then you give it a true or false. In this case, we're just going to give it true. Print yes. Press enter. Now remember here in Python that indentation controls our blocks. So this indentation started the block. And then a blank line ended that. So what happened here is we had an if test. The expression or thing that was evaluated as true or false comes next. And then it's followed up with a colon. And then if that's true, what's in here is run. So let's do the opposite. So we'll say if false, print yes. Now in this case, we're not going to see yes printed because this is false and so what's inside is not run. So there was no uh, yes. Now let's uh, put that together. We can also have a case for uh, if true. We can also have an else, you know, if it's false, we can say if true print yes, back up here, else, and print no. So in this case, since this is true, it's going to print yes, and it's not going to jump into this else block, so we'll try that. And it printed yes. And I hit up arrow twice, and I'm going back and I'm going to edit this here. It's a little bit weird inside of IPython to be editing like this, so let's say false and we'll go ahead and print, uh, hit enter, and it should print no because this is false. It will jump to the else, and then it will continue on through and print no. Um, now, in terms of expressions, the kinds of things you can put in there is anything you want that evaluates to true or false, and that's a type bool. So if we say type of false, it comes out bool and type of true. So you can do simple things like, does 1 equal 1? The answer is true. Is it not equal? That's false. Is 1 greater than or greater than or equal to? Anything along those lines that evaluates to true or false. It can be uh, wild, complicated expressions with lots of parentheses. So we could say 1 equals 2 equals 1 and 2 equals 2. This is the logical AND operator in C, but not here. We say AND. Um, we can also say OR. And so you can try a whole range of expressions. So here, 1 does not equal to 1, and 2 is not equal to 2. So we're testing various things. You can also do some fun string comparisons. We can say is HELL in HELLO world true. So you can do string tests where you can say is something inside of, of that. And we can also do things like, um, let's say, 4 in 1, 2, 6, 7, false. But that if we threw a 4 in our list, then 4 is actually inside of our list. So we can do some simple tests about things and we can look for patterns in strings. Uh, pretty simple, but it gets a lot done. There's also a really handy a new functionality in Python that wasn't there all along. And it's an inline if statement that lets you compose stuff. So we can say, we can write equal if 1 equals 0, else not really equal. And what this is, is you have a statement that will get returned if this is true, otherwise 
it's going to return that. And what you can do with that is you can do simple things like print 1 equals 0 is and then we can copy this little section here. Paste and and more text. So you can start building up like yes or no's and things like that based on your data and you can actually make little reports that uh, make a nicely formatted report out of your end result. So in here our little string got put in there and then if we rerun that and we say enter and this then changed to equals. So you can do th so really nice things like yes or no and other such things as you're doing your reports. It works pretty well. Um, and you can also do assignments of variables that way very nicely. So we can say answer uh, it equals yes if true. This is a pretty boring case, but I guess the idea across. Else no. Answer yes. And if we did something that's false, so we'll say 10 in 1, 4, 5, 6. Answer no. And that way it works really well for being able to um, create some quick variables that you're going to use later on. Um, okay, so let's go over to our Emacs window and I'm going to jump over to our uh, display here and we're going to go ahead and try and work with some command line arguments and um, we're going to look at some simple things so we're going to say try args.py create ourselves a little thing here that's ready to go and there's a special variable in Python that helps you work with running programs so if we type print name this is a very special variable that changes its value depending on where it is if it's in the in an actual running program uh, it's actually in set to main but if it's inside of a module when it's being called it's set to the module name so we'll go ahead and say print underscore underscore name underscore underscore inside of our try args and if we run try args you'll see that it's set to main but if we do import try args it's set to the name of the module which is try args which is the same thing as the file name down here so what we can do with that is we can say if underscore name equals main do I will say act like a program otherwise uh, don't do that and it acts like a module that you just load so we can say print name and we can put that inside of there so we can say if we run it we get main back and if we and now we have to remember we have to do a reload of try args because this is a module and it, once it's loaded it stays in unless you ask it to reload if you just keep importing and it didn't print anything this time. So that's very handy and what I typically tend to do with programs is I'll say I'll make a function called main and then we'll say def main print start of main and that way you have a function that you could then use and we can say reload try args and you could always call it from inside of here we can say try args dot main and we have our start of main so we have that function available to us whenever we'd like very handy but let's take a look at command line arguments and we're going to start looking into the standard library that comes with python it's it's chock full of helpful utilities and we're going to import sys the sys module contains all sorts of system related stuff so sys period and remember you can press tab and see lots of things that are inside of this uh, module space and the one we want is argv and if we could do argv question mark 
uh, it's actually a list. So sys.argv, let's take a look what's in there. These are the command line arguments that we used for calling our Python script. So let's go ahead and in here, we're going to import sys. So typically you put your imports for a particular file of Python at the top. And let's take a look at sys.argv and what is that going to be equal to? So we'll go ahead and type sys.argv and we're just going to print out the command line arguments that are coming into our script. And let's go ahead and run try args. So in there you get just one argument there and with command line arguments, if we remember back to the shell scripting sections, we can put arguments after it. We can say like hello world, press enter, and we'll now see that it breaks that into one argument on each space. So we have a hello and a world, and we could have some numbers one to 1000, and we can then work with those. So that's pretty handy. This could be a list of file names. It could be a list of, say, computers to connect to or things to process or jobs to do. It could be any number of things. And this is the very simple way of just processing command line arguments. So what we could do is we can say for arg, we'll call it argument to make it easier, in sys.argv and print an argument. So we'll go ahead and we'll give that a quick try. Run, and you can see an argument looping through all each of those things. And remember in Python, we can actually uh, count those if we want to. We can say enumerate is a really handy function that you can wrap around anything that's a list of things. And then we can say arg number. And I'm gonna put a underscore in there to make it a little bit readable. And we'll say is arg num and arg number. So if we run this, it's going to loop through it. It'll put in the argument number here, and then the argument in, into argument, and loop through each time, and run. Now you can do interesting things. There's a continue is a uh, function that, or a, a reserve word that you can call that will jump around the loop if you hit something. So we can say if hell in uh, argument. So we're going to test to see if the, the word hell is inside of that string. And in here we'll indent with our continue and then you'll have a quick jump around. So when you hit this, if you see hell inside of a line, it comes down here, jumps into this section, uh, calls the continue, and what continue does is skip anything that's below and jump up to the top. So our hello part is going to disappear from this list. So let's go ahead and try it. Run. And so up oh, hello disappeared. And we could even make it a little bit more obvious. Print skip hell. So we'll try that, and we should see a print skip hell. So this way you can loop around. And what we can also do is you can use something called break. And break will completely break out of the for loop, and it will stop continue. It won't continue on. It will just jump right out of it. And we'll say print done with for. So we know that we're done with our for loop here. And we'll say if two in argument break Let's say print give up so what this will do is when it sees it number two inside of that string what it will do and that's the character two not the actual integer it will then print give up the break will jump back up to this for loop kill the end of the, the for loop and not do the rest of it and jump down to the print at the bottom so let's go ahead and try this run and if we take a look here we start off with our print start of main right there then we're gonna hit the print of the argv so all of our arguments got printed out on this line right here and now the for loop starts and we're at our first argument here then 
will come through that hell is not in our argument, and two is not in our argument, so we're going to print an argument, which is right here. Come back around, we have hello, and hello is in the argument, so we'll print our skip hell, and then we'll say continue, which jumps to the top and keeps going. Come back through it, we have world, which we'll use this print down here, and argument one, yep, that comes all the way down to print. And then we have a two in our string, so nope, but yep, the if two in argument, yes, so we'll give up and call this break, which will jump to here and exit out of our for loop down to our print. And then it will continue off down the rest of the program. So that's the basics of command line argument processing. We've brought back the for loop a little bit, and we've used some of our if tests, which is quite nice. Um, now, a couple things to look at in Python is there's this I am Python menu item up at the top, and right now it just says rescan. So let's go ahead and rescan. And what that did is it looked through our file and tried to find anything that it knew about that it could give us as a, hang a hanger to, to jump to. So these are markers, uh, functions, classes, things like that. So if we say def hello world print hello world I am Python doesn't have it but if we hit rescan it now has hello world so it knows about what's in your file once it's rescanned it uh, now we can also say my list equals 110 so we've got some list if we rescan this there's nothing in there so if we go over to I believe it's tools you want to make sure you turn on so source code parsers semantic what this is is extra functionality that lets it understand your source code turn that on and we'll go ahead and type rescan see if this works and now it knows a lot more about your code it knows about variables so there's my list it can jump to that my list functions it knows about all of your functions so we can jump to main and we can go imports it will jump to our imports uh, code it knows about some of the blocks that we've got so jump to an if so it saw our big if block down here and what this is is a helper to get you around the file as it gets bigger we've been working with very tiny files at this point and they haven't been big enough to really need to have helpers to find what's where but inside of Emacs there's lots of tools to help you manage your code and figure out what's where. Now I'm going to show you a couple other things to help you break up your code and to, to make it more usable. There's a couple of things that you can do one of which is just style wise if, if say you want to put a comment to break things up we can do something like this so I'm going to teach you first a quick Emacs helper which is control U which is uh, a repeat or argument key so if it's if we just use control U and then a character that we would type normally it'll repeat that character four times so I'm gonna hit pound for the comment and it will do four the default is four but I don't really want four we'll do control U 40 so four zero and then the pound character and there will then be 40 pound signs and you can use something like that to break apart your code if it helps you to see logical groups of things. Maybe you have a couple functions that are together. End of world. Print. Goodbye. So in this case, we've now logically blocked our code apart. And maybe we'll do a bigger one here. So U70 and then pound for our little main if test at the bottom. So we now have, and we'll do an IM Python rescan, and you'll see now we have functions. We can jump to things this way, or you can see them logically on the screen with these visual separators in there to help out. Now Python also has helpers, and these are called doc strings that help you understand some of what's going on. So if you did help sys, the sys module would then tell you all sorts of documentation about itself. 
Now that's actually stored inside of the Python source code, and we can write our own doc string. So if we say reload try args, we say try dot arg or try underscore args period and then a tab. We can now see that um, we have a mixture of things. Unfortunately, we've got some stuff from coming from our directory, but we've also got some of our functions in here. So we can say hello world question mark. And there, what it says here is that there's no doc string. So let's go create what's called a doc string for hello world. And after the first line of any function or class or right after a variable, we can create what's called a doc string or documentation string that explains what's in there. And in our case, this function is pretty boring, but the idea is, is uh, nice, and especially if you've got like math or some, some wild concepts going on inside of a function that you're hiding behind the scenes, it's good to put what's in here. So print hello world pretty boring. So let's go ahead and save that and we'll come back here and we'll say reload try args and I'm going to hit the up arrow and let's ask it again for that doc string. So now you can see we have a documentation string and that's pretty handy. Now if uh, one line doesn't give, do it for you because oftentimes you need lots of instructions to explain things, we can say this is a multi line description. Write lots and lots about the function here. So in this case, we've used the Python triple quote convention to do a multi-line string. So this string starts right here and ends down here. And we'll get, let you write as much as you want down below. So we'll go ahead and reload that. And we'll type um, try args dot tab and we just worked with main and let's ask it for help on that one and so now you can see that there's multiple lines of help written in there as you go. Writing good documentation is so important uh, when you're just messing around trying to figure something out probably not the time to write documentation but before you walk away from your code and you let it sit for days, weeks, months, years then you should be writing some documentation and making sure that everything that you do is explained what may be obvious to you today is not likely obvious to you in years to come or uh, to other people. So it's important to be able to do that. And uh, I think that's all we have for now. This should get you going on creating some Python code. We're going to do a couple more concepts and then dig into actually working with some data in Python. So thank you for joining me.